Now, since CDs became available to download at the click of a button, the days of browsing through the racks of local music stores seem to be numbered. But the UK's 300 remaining independent music shops are fighting back. Yes, they've got together to set up a website encouraging people to give them another go. We paid a visit to an independent store in London, Soho, to see what it had to offer. Phonic has been open for six and a half years now and we started off as a vinyl only shop uh, that mostly sold dance music but we've kind of um, expanded to sell lots of CDs, uh, t-shirts, headphones and all other things. So we've kind of expanded as sales have gone down slightly because of digital music. A lot of DJs come into the shop who come in on a weekly basis to hear all the new records that that come in, uh, but there's also lots of uh, collectors. We sell a lot of limited edition vinyl issues that you can only buy here. We can recommend records to people. If you like something, we can recommend other titles. And you know, you get the expertise of all the staff who work here. It's a friendly atmosphere. You can actually hear the records and flick through the records rather than just listening to 30 seconds online. The reason to come to these sort of shops because you can get it all in one bag and obviously you can listen to the tunes. It's a nice vibe, nicely chilled out and just a big selection. I like the product and I like buying records. Um, I just don't think you can browse in the same way online. On a Friday afternoon here when all the new records come in from Europe or America, then uh, it's quite a social thing and it's quite busy with a lot of DJs who are playing at the weekend in London. So it's uh, a nice Friday afternoon here. Well, let's speak now to record producer William Orbit, along with Alison Wenman from the Association of Independent Music. Very good morning to you, to you both. You. Um, William, as a producer, do you love to spend time in proper small independent stores flicking through? white labels or whatever it is? I'm going to say that I actually love to browse online. <laughs> and that's part of the problem, isn't it? I get, I get tremendous enjoyment from it mm. and I find the things I want, you know, exactly what I want and I, I get tremendous joy when I find the right item. Um, if I'm going to go to an actual record store, it, it, I'm probably going to be out shopping and if I am, I'm going to be with friends and family, so I need to be somewhere where they're going to enjoy themselves as well. And I think if I was riffling through um, actual records for too long are not being very good company. Yeah. <laughs> it's Alison, it's a curious situation in a way, isn't yeah. it? Because th these guys, they're getting together, putting themselves on the internet and they're just embracing what is happening around them. But at the same time, the effect, I mean, if people do uh, yeah. th that, so they stay at home and just browse, yeah. then they will not be, the shops won't physically be there. I think it's a combination of both. I mean, the internet is an amazing uh, place to go and browse. But there's a lot of people that want to go down and rifle through the racks and talk to the owner. There's a lot of PAs in store, a lot of bands turn up. Um, there's a lot of merchandise, T-shirts and rare bits and pieces merchandise that you wouldn't necessarily get on the internet. And it's, it's essentially a, a place where people um, congregate. It's a kind of social I just wonder, Thanks. you see, because yeah, I, I think it sounds lovely what you're saying. Yeah. But I think if you ask people, do you like the idea of a shop where you can rifle through and it's all a bit, and you might find something special, they'd probably say, that sounds lovely. How often do they go? Well, the evidence probably is they hardly ever do, and isn't that part of the problem? Well, there's been incredibly savage competition in the marketplace. We've seen these numbers go from 1,000 to 300 in 10 years. So you might be thinking the record shop is an endangered species. And that's one of the reasons why there's been this concerted effort to put them back on the map so that it may encourage people to think again about you know what, what, what they've got in their local high street. And it's part of the high street as well. I understand what you're saying, William, about um, you know, the fact that when you're with other people, you, you can't go off and do a, a solitary activity. But imagine we give you sort of three hours in the afternoon on your own. What could an independent record shop own offer that would get you back and spending your time there? Well, merchandise, all the trappings, all the special editions and mm. so forth. And um, funnily enough, a lot of shops that aren't called record stores, like clothing shops, especially in holiday destinations, when you've got that kind of time, they sell records. Mm. And I'm wondering whether it could be the other way around, whether the record stores could look into selling things that aren't necessarily musical, but mm. make the experience more yeah. full. I guess one of the other things that maybe has changed is that if a, if a record shop owner knows they've got a, something very special, chances they'll they'll try and sell it on the internet, won't they now? Because they that's probably the where the market is. Aren't they? They're so yeah. 
push in here, but aren't they all the actual real stores got some backroom operation bundling up things into parcels and sending them out? Oh, they've got international customer base. I mean, that's one of the things the internet has done. Yes. If you're a really good record shop and you've focused and concentrated on you know one area that you're passionate about, you will have customers all over the world who know precisely. I mean, often before you get the box, what's in it? Mm. You know, there's a tremendous kind of glue around the world about uh, about you know your sort of destination, your favourite record mm. shop. Yeah. Do you, do you find, William, that um, some of the pleasure went out of independent record stores when CDs came in, that, that there was a real pleasure in going through 12 inches and talking to the person behind the counter to find out what they'd just got in, and that has I'm kind of sure, evaporated? Really. I mean, there's a romantic ideal about, you know, we've all seen those movies, like, you know, the eyes Genesis, meet across yeah. the jazz. Oh, yeah. you like jazz as well? <laughs> I know, next thing you know. But actually, <laughs> it's more like the guy in uh, High Fidelity where it's a bit hostile, you know. I mean, yeah. I never found necessarily wanted what I wanted because probably the guy whose store it was had a particular idea of what was cool and maybe what I wanted wasn't in his particular top ten. Did you ever say, do you know who I am? <laughs> oh, that'll get me thrown out of an indie <laughs> store. Uh, nice to hear this morning. Thank you both very much. Thank yeah, you. lovely to talk to you. Cheers. Thanks so much.